today I'm going to talk about the math anxiety. First, I want to ask you a question. Do you like math? Are you good at it? No. I'm just not good at math. It says so often in our society, with little embarrassment, that it seems like we have accepted the fact that we, most of us are not good at math. And actually, psychologists have constructed the concept of math anxiety, which is the feeling of apprehension and the increased physiological reaction when people deal with math. And when the victims are easy to be blamed, they are blameless indeed, because math anxiety has diverse origins. The first contributor to math anxiety is that it requires a high level of abstract thinking that our young does are just developing. Unlike other skills like language processing, face detection, or navigation, which we obtain them whether or not we study them in school. After centuries of developing, math has become a subject that requires skills that goes beyond the numerosity skills we use in our everyday life. According to David Gilry, math has become a revolutionary, novel, highly abstract and different, difficult domain, meaning that students do not have inherent skill to understand it. And the second contributor is its objective nature. Writing, or a presentation, or a judge subjectly, meaning that there is room for the evaluator to wiggle. But math is different. There is a clear boundary between the right or wrong answer. And according to the psychologist Jameson, the strongest predictor of math is one's math self-concept. In another word, a student's confidence in his ability to complete a math task. However, when a student are constantly being told they are wrong, the anxiety will emerge. And things will become even worse if they sow many seeds of effort but reap a meager harvest. And being constantly told they are wrong will lead to a situation called learned helplessness which means that the student will give up trying to solve the problem, even if they have the ability. And this will lead to their decrease of self-efficacy, destroy their mass self-concept, and result in enhancing their beliefs that they are indeed bad at mass. And the third factor is here. Um, a little bit of uh, anxiety toward math is not untypical, and a little bit of anxious in theory actually can help students to learn math. However, for those people who have math anxiety, math is not something difficult. It is truly painful. And here comes to the third contributor of math anxiety, which can be explained by scatter signals to factor theory. This is an emotion processing theory that said in order for a person to experience emotion, one must be physically aroused and be able to cognitively label the arousal. So scientists try to find out how people react to mass physically. Um, the scientist Cyril Biolock conducted a study by letting the participant to do math when scanning their brain using the fMRI machine. And the results turned out that for those people who have max anxiety, only mere anticipation of math will lead to their increased activity in brain regions that associated with threat detection and the experience of pain. On the other hand, those people will cognitively label they are now in a difficult situation 
that they could not manage their stress level to overcome an obstacle. Those two factors combine together and result in the emergence of our mass anxiety. And the false factor comes from our unconscious mind. Have you ever seen people who say they hate math in a sense of pride? Or have you ever seen failing a math test as an honor? Well, here I will use my own example. Every time I get a low score in a math test, I will blame the math loudly in front of my classmates in order to gain response and let them to accept me. Um, and when I go home, I usually post negative QQ or WeChat posts to express my strong dislocation towards the mass. For example, once I have posted, the rain outside is not a rain, but my tears after the mass exam. <laughs> However, after a few hours, when I calm down, the endless emptiness and self-doubt overcomes me. And clearly, it is not an honor to get a low score in math test, even if teenagers say that aloud. And in reality, this is called defense mechanism. Taunting their poor grades just helps them to save face when they are embarrassed. And this is actually called reaction formation in psychology which is a person unconsciously replace an unwanted or anxiety of provoking impulse which is opposite, often expressed in an exaggerated or a showy way. In the short term, it can help those teenagers to escape from the reality. However, in the long term, the overreaction to mass will lead to emotional exhaustion, decrease in resilience, and eventually perpetuate a negative thinking pattern. And if you have all those symptoms, you are not alone. According to a study done by the Psychological Research and Behavioral Management in 2018, approximately 93% of adults in the United States say that they have experienced some degrees of mass anxiety. And an estimated 70% of US residents have a severe form of the condition. So it is clearly problematic that the modern math education has actually changed one subject that everyone can learn to one that adds on burden to many students' life. And let's go back to the concept of math anxiety and see if there are any solutions to these problems that pervades the world today. Well, some psychologists think that we need to solve the problem in a psychological approach. Other people, like the scientist Patricia Stroke, think that the only way we can address mass anxiety is to fix mass itself. In my opinion, teachers should introduce the process-based learning into the classroom because it can foster students to continuously thinking and studying rather than just listening to what the teacher says. And let's focus on the math that we study. When learning calculus, after the teacher introduced the basic concept of derivatives, they can actually let the student to research about the application of calculus or derivatives in our everyday life according to the student's passion in order to create a concrete association with the students and the context in the textbook. For example, for girls who are interested in beauty-related field, they can research about how the calculus and derivatives are used in 3D model for facial surgery prediction. According to what we have learned, the more triangles they are, and the smaller they become, the more approximate they are. 
So the scientists create a smooth 3D surface school of 650,000 tetrahedrons in order to predict the bones deform after the surgery. And during the visual operation, the surgeon moves the bone. When the bone is moved, um, its force exerted on the other bone changes because of the stretching or the pressing of the bound between them. And the rate of the forces change can be expressed using derivatives. Using an algorithm to keep track of them, scientists can eventually make a model that keep track of all those derivatives. Finally, scientists can use the model to predict the bone's shape and size after the facial surgery. So by implementing those ideas into students' minds, math is not the dead questions on our test sheet. It actually becomes alive. Also, finishing those um, research, by finishing those research, students can get a sense of accomplishment, which is much better than the sense of frustration after they get a little mistakes in their math test. It can actually reduce students' math anxiety and boost their confidence. As we can see, there are many interesting applications of math that we do not learn in school. And there is a beautiful side of math that we do not pay enough attention. The ignorance of the essential part of math actually leads to the misconception of it and the anxiety towards it. So in our school, we learn mostly about calculation instead of application. If I can summarize all those ideas into one sentence, it could be this. Math is not just about solving for x. It is also about figuring out y. So I hope that everyone can find the hidden secret beneath math and overcome your fear toward math. And finally, dare I say, enjoy math. That's all. Thank you. <laughs>